official title is How Squares Evolved. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, how did we ever get from traditional square dance to modern square dance as done in square dance clubs. Um, and there is, there is a, um, there's a myth out there that uh, up until or, uh, 1940s, uh, all anybody ever did was visiting couple squares, where first couple out to the right, swing your opposite, swing your own, and on to the next. And, and Lloyd Shaw sort of invented modern square dancing with all the, the different calls that you have to learn. Uh, and of course, that's taking two snapshots and extrapolating that that's all there ever was. So uh, I, I, you, a lot of you are my age, give or take five or 10 years. Uh, did you did you used to enjoy uh, reading the funny papers on a Sunday morning when the paper came? Um, and there was a um, there was a feature, and I think it was in a lot of papers. That was about half a page of the comic section, and it was word games and uh, fill in the picture and what's the difference between these two pictures and so forth. Do you remember a game where you took a, a four-letter word, say warm? And by changing one letter at a time, you ended up with a completely different word, like cold. Um, that's kind of how square dancing evolved. Um, it, it changed a little at a time until, if you go to a square dance club now, uh, it's uh, practically unrecognizable. But there's, there's a little bit of irony in there, and that is that traditional Western dancing uh, tended to be uh, very circular, very swooping in its motions, uh, and very beautiful in, in a lot of ways. Um, and it, it's, um, there's two, um, two big uh, overall strains of square dance. There's the across the set kind of figures, which come from the old cotillions and quadrilles of the 18th and 19th century. And, and that's uh, sometimes thought of as New England style, even though there are, there are and were visiting double dances in New England style, but there's uh, the kind of a trademark figure was something like heads right and left through, heads and ladies chain, sides the same, that sort of thing. And then there's the around the set tradition, and we don't really know uh, as much as we'd like to about where that comes from. Uh, that's the prevailing style in the southern, southern mountains, and uh, you see vestiges of it right up the Atlantic into New England and, and York State. Um, so the across the set is uh, made up of um, figures, uh, basic movements, basic building blocks like ladies' chain, like right and left, stars to some extent. Uh, whereas the around the set or visiting couple tradition is made up of uh, unique figures, each with a, a name, each with, with a unique set of, of motions, like bird in the cage, like duck for the oyster, like mountaineer loop, and so forth. And, and in each town, the caller might know six or twelve of them and would uh, throw them at the dancers in any order. Uh, but there wasn't so much emphasis on uh, learning basic building blocks. Each figure was completed in itself. And, and that's the kind of um, that's the kind of dance that Lloyd Shaw, starting about the 1930s, uh, was reviving um, with, with his uh, performing high school kids that went around the country and got people excited about square dancing. And then after the war, um, a lot of people formed these square dance clubs where you, you dressed up and, and you took lessons and you joined a club and it was sort of exclusive in the sense that they wanted to know who, who was a square dancer and who wasn't. But the dancing didn't change at first. The first thing that changed was the structure, the organization, um, and the idea that you didn't just show up at a dance, that you had to have about six lessons before you, you, could, you could pass muster. And then gradually, during the 1950s and 60s, uh, they started inventing new dances and combining the old basics in different ways and eventually writing new basics. And what happened was a lot like the word game, in that the, uh, they would add things one or two at a time, but then they would drop some of the old things. Just as in contra dancing now, you've, you've got uh, several new moves, but you don't see contra corners as much as you used to at, at a, an urban dance. Um, and partly because it, it sort of 
requires an, une an unequal setup where the ones do more than the twos. And the same thing with, with the squares in the 50s and 60s, that they, they got rid of, of things where uh, some people were moving and some people were standing still. They tried to find ways to keep everybody moving all the time, just as that's the, uh, the ideal now in urban contra dancing, that you don't want to leave anybody standing still. So it changed gradually, but uh, just as with the word game, when going from warm to cold or cold to warm, um, after a while, uh, it, it got so that uh, um, it, it was almost unrecognizable if you knew any traditional square dancing. I started square dancing in school in the 50s, and in the, in the middle 1960s, um, I started dancing in New York City with, with uh, some square dance clubs. And at that point in the evolution of squares, it was possible for somebody with a solid background in traditional or what was then called Eastern style square dancing in, in New York. It was possible for somebody who, who knew their stuff uh, to walk into a square dance club and, and get by. There were only two or three moves that they used consistently that, that were not in the traditional repertoire. Um, Ten years later, that was impossible. Uh, you, if, you, if you knew just about everything there was to know about traditional squares in, in any region of the country, uh, you couldn't just walk into a square dance club. It, it had completely uh, changed character. So let's take a look at some of the old stuff and some of the transitional stuff uh, from, from the late 1940s, uh, early to mid-1950s. Oh, Mrs. Lloyd Shaw used to call swoopies, dances that have a lot of circular motion. These are based on the Southern Mountain figures. In fact, they're the same as a lot of the Southern Mountain figures. But in the West, it was more customary to do them in four couple squares, uh, as in parts of the South, rather than in, in a big circle, as in other parts of the South. So this is, this is what you might have encountered um, anywhere um, to the west of the Mississippi um, in the 1930s. Um, the, the basic pattern is that uh, the one couple leads out to the right, does a, a figure, goes on to the next, and does either the same figure or a different figure, goes on to the last, etc. Uh, and then there's a, a chorus, of course, usually Alamand left, grand right, and left, promenade. Uh, but there's, there's also a little sub-chorus uh, which uh, was done after each visiting couple figure. Uh, and in, um, in different regions, it had different names. In parts of the South, uh, you might hear it called Georgia Rangtang or Georgia Alabama. Uh, in, um, in the upper Midwest, it might be called Run the Reel. Uh, and I, I seem to remember it has at least two or three other names. Uh, but um, what, what Lloyd Shaw uh, collected and disseminated uh, it was called the do si do, not to be confused with the back to back do si do of the Northeast. So let's have uh, couple number one go over to couple number two, couple number three go over to couple number four, so everybody's looking at this at the same time. Um, and either, uh, you, at this point, you will be circling four to the left, either as part of a visiting couple figure or after. A visiting couple figure that doesn't include it. Uh, for instance, let's just let's do a simple figure. Uh, around that couple and you take a little peek. The first couple, keep your partner's hand and lean over uh, past the inactive couple. Uh, lady to the right, to the left, and, and try to try to look at each other behind that couple. And it's perfectly okay if the inactive couple tries to keep them from doing that. You can, yeah, trying to block their view. So it's around that couple and you take the little beat back to the center and swing your sweep. And all these swings are short swings, so you have my permission to use a walk around swing if you want, or you can do a buzz swing, but, but it will be only, only four to eight counts. And then around that couple and you beat once more, back to the center and you circle up four. Join hands and circle to the left. Okay, freeze right there. Now there are several ways to do this, and the way that um, the way that Lloyd Shaw and his his group settled on uh, to do the the western or southwestern do si do is like this. Uh, I'm going to come out into the middle. Okay, and 
chase his face. <laughs> Karen. Karen. <laughs> okay, so from a circle, um, the, we are going to do a corner roll away. The ladies are going to roll to the right in front of your corner, and the ladies will switch places like so. And almost immediately, we will catch left hands with our partner. And we're not going to do a full turn. We're just going to almost just change places like this. And the gents are going to reach behind each other's back and turn your opposite. No, the other way. Wayne. Other back. <laughs> behind your back. And turn, your, turn your opposite all the way around with the right hand. All the way around. And the gents reach behind each other again to courtesy turn your partner. Oh like the end of a lady's chain. <laughs> and at that point, at that point, the call is usually one more change and on you go. And that means instead of wheeling to face that couple, you do a little mini promenade in that position to go to the next couple or to go home, depending on which couple you were with. So watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's corner roll away, uh, left hand past your partner, Opposite right all the way around and courtesy turn to your partner. So from a, from a circle, it'll be break it all up with a do C do corner roll away, partner left, neighbor right, all the way around, courtesy turn to your partner right. <laughs> 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 was done at the end of every visiting couple figure so they they were used to it and they, there were different versions too um, the, the one we think of as Georgia Rangtang was uh, it didn't have the roll away it, it, it just had opposite right partner left opposite right and then partner either courtesy turn or let the lady come around behind you and circle four or go on to the next so there were minor variations but the the key was it was almost always opposite right, partner left. So whoever you were giving right to was not your partner. Whoever you were giving left to was your partner. Rather than have, rather than have both couples go out at the same time, uh, I'm going to have first couple out to the right, and then you're going to go to the next couple. And when you go on to the last couple, I'll say second couple follow up. So we'll have. As, as many people dancing as possible, as much of the time as possible. Uh, this is one way to, uh, to get more people active on a visiting couple dance. There are several ways to do it.
style of dancing is so hard to find these days. What, in what Dorothy Shaw called swoopies, swoop, swooping circular figures. That, that, was, that was a typical visiting couple square in the 1930s and 40s in a lot of parts of the country, apparently. Um, they, and they were, there were several other dances that were popular um, in, in uh, just about everywhere except possibly New England. Uh, there's one called the Arkansas Traveler, which actually felt very much like the Georgia Rantang or the Cowboy Dozy Do. It was opposite right, partner left from a standing start. Let's try it. Head two couples go forward and back. Go forward again. Turn the opposite person with the right hand round. Now go toward home and turn your partner with the left hand around. Now everybody turn your corner by the right hand around. Partner by the left hand around. Take your partner, uh, take your corner, 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 I'm asleep. Take your corner as she comes around and promenade all the way around and ask the chance on <laughs> Okay, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that one all the way through. So get your original partner back. Typically, that would be done four times for the head gents, so that the ladies would go all the way around, and then four times for the side gents. Twice for the head gents, twice for the side gents, and the ladies would always, only go around once. So that was one of the few um, dance, southern and western squares where you actually the partner change. That was one of the first partner changing dances that became widely popular. Uh, once, once you got into singing square in the east and migrated westward, and a lot of the singing squares have a partner change in them. And, uh, those of you who've grown up doing squares uh, well remember dances like because just because, where you take your corner each time. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's look at another one. Uh, dip and dive, otherwise known as inside high and the outside low, or inside over, Next inside time. arch and outside under. Next time. Couple number one, yeah. go to couple number two, and circle to the left just halfway around and hang on to your partner, but then go to the other couple. So the active couple is on the outside looking in, and the other couple is in the middle looking at them. Now, the, the ground rules are simple. Uh, all three couples that are facing the windows are, are going to be doing this, one, two, and four. Um, the ground rules are simple. If you are in the middle, you make an arch. If you're, on the, if you're on the outside, if you're facing an arch, you go under it. And if you're on the outside facing out, you do an automatic twirl to swap, otherwise known as a frontier whirl or California twirl. And I won't, I won't be able to choose which of those names to use because I won't have time to say it. It's, it's, it's considered to be automatic if you're facing out and looking at nobody. And that, that's, that's not you at the moment because you're facing in. Oh. You'll, you'll see. Okay, couple two make an arch, couple one dug under, and now couple one make an arch and four dug under. And keep doing that back and forth across the set. Yeah, as soon as you get to the middle, you make the arch. And, and now when you're facing out, you, you swap places so the lady is, is again on the right and, and go back. Yeah. Keep doing that until the side couples two and four are back where we started. Couple number one goes to couple number three. Are there questions so far? Two and four should be back home. Couple one, go to couple three, and join hands with them. Circle to the left, halfway around, and stop. Okay, keep your hands joined, and you have nobody to dip and dive with, so you're gonna do duck for the oyster instead. So couple number one, duck for the oyster, and back up. Couple number three, dig for the clam, and back up. And now listen, uh, you're gonna do duck through the hole in the old tin can, which means couple number one, duck under, but don't let go. Uh, roll back to back, bring your hands up and over, and pull the other couple through. The other couple, keep your hand in front of your face until you get through, and then you unwind. Because if you unwind first, you ain't gonna fit. That's it, so you're back in your circle. Couple number one, duck on through, go to couple number four. Couple number three, just do a, a swap in place. Couple one and four, circle to the left, halfway around. 
And stop a couple of ones on the outside looking in. So here we go. Inside arch on the outside under new inside arch. Outside under new inside arch. Outside under. Keep doing that back and forth. And until the side couples are back home. Okay, close enough. Let's dance. Bow to your partner. Bow to your corner. All join in. Circle to the left. Eh? Hands dancing. Hands playing. Circle to the right. If it takes all day, the other way back. Have a bad left with the corner jack. Right hand to your partner. Grand right to the left. Go round the hands. Or hand in time with a band and promenade. Now a low branch promenade. To go to a two right back. Four for a half that night. Inside arch and the outside under, inside arch and the outside under, inside high and the outside low. And you dip, you dive and away you go. Now on to the next. And a circle four, halfway around in the middle of the floor. And you duck for the oyster. Dig for the clam. Duck through the hole with the old tin can. Turn away, you know, pull on through. Now one more duck. On to the last. And circle four. Inside arch and the outside under. New inside arch and the outside under. You could dive and don't you thunder. Inside high and the outside low. When you get the dive and away you go. Everybody hold and swing. Everybody hold and everybody swing. exactly what town something came from. Uh, I have colleagues, um, Phil Jamison, Larry Edelman, Bob Nelsimer, who have studied the dances of particular localities and can tell you a lot more than, than I can about what was done where. But of course, none of us can be uh, in more than one place at the same time, and there are a lot of towns and villages whose, whose dance forms never got recorded even by somebody writing it down because they were too busy um, living their lives to, to document what they were doing. It didn't seem important, and, and uh, folklorists, there, there just weren't enough to go around to all the, the towns and villages. So we don't know exactly what was being done, but we have a good idea of, of the flavor of a particular region, like the Ozarks or the Southern Appalachians or uh, the Eastern Shore of Maryland, for instance. Uh, we, we have a, a, a feel for what it would have felt like. So what, what I'm doing in this session is extremely eclectic. Uh, this is just basically non-New England style dancing. So don't worry so much about the phrasing. 
uh, that the timing is up to me. I, I try to give you time to do whatever it is you're doing before I tell you to do the next thing. Um, I, hope, I hope that answers a, a, a sticky question. Uh, and there, there, are, there are callers who, who try to phrase everything. Um, the, the example that stands out in my mind is Ed Durlacher, who called in the New York City area from the 1930s to the 1950s and, and had thousands of people dancing to him all at once. And, and his shtick was to make everything as easy as possible and he would take southern figures and he would figure out how long it took to, to do each part and he would make what amounted to a singing square out of them and, and have everybody doing every, the same thing exactly, like, almost like a drill team, which is about the only way you can call to a thousand squares at the same time <laughs> and, and hope that they'll all finish up at the same time. Yeah, the, the, at the other extreme, um, I, I can't resist telling you this. <laughs> they, um, the, the dance halls of Montreal in, in the 1950s, uh, they would hold maybe 2,000 people in a single dance hall. And the, um, they would do three uh, cha-chas or Latin numbers or, or foxtrots, whatever. And then they, uh, the fiddlers would get up on stage and they, they'd do about 10 or 15 minutes of fiddling. And each square had its own collar. <laughs> It was up to the caller to, to, to try to get every uh, couple active before the fiddlers stopped. And sometimes uh, a set would be in the middle of a figure when, when the music stopped, but they would, they would try to let everybody be active. So you can, you can imagine that uh, it, it did, did not look like a drill team. And in fact, one, one time at, uh, I used to have a, a dance every Monday night in the Boston area, and one time April 1st fell on a Monday, so I, uh, I came up with a bunch of gimmicks, including uh, telling each square to elect its own caller. And it, looking at it from the stage, it looked like an amusement park. <laughs> One set was going back and forth, one set was going around and around, and you had one, one set that had, had been, that turned itself into a snake and was going in and around the other. I said, oh yeah, that's the train around the park. <laughs> so, you know, it, it really depends on where, where you learned to dance and where the caller learned to call, what from his grandpappy or from, from, from a book and a recording, which is uh, much more common these days. Okay. Um, we, just, we haven't done anything in these squares yet, nope. right? No, we just we finished uh, Dip and Dive and the other squares. So, um, moving right along, uh, I, I promised I would show you a little bit about how modern square dancing evolved from traditional. Uh, there, was, there was a whole family of dances called Divide the Ring or Split the Ring. And typically one couple uh, would be active and you'd go between the opposite couple and separate around back to place and swing your partner or some such. So a couple one would go down and split number three, go around the outside. And after a while, uh, people wanted to have more people uh, dancing, moving, and fewer people standing at any one point. So they would have the head couples, one and three, instead of one couple splitting the other, they would have the head couples pass through and go around the outside and maybe swing the one you meet and then keep on going swing your partner. And after a while, uh, it got to be like this. Let's try this. The head two couples go forward and back. Now, before we go on, remember that so far we've had figures that end at home and everybody home and everybody swing and then it's like shifting gears to go to the chorus. Alan A left your corner, Graham right and left. Everybody got home before you did the chorus. The chorus was noticeably separate from the dance. Starting with uh, this, uh, the pass through and around the outside bit, uh, it got to where you, you would go right from the figure, straight from the figure into the chorus. So be prepared for an alibi left with your corner when you're not expecting it. <laughs> okay, head two couples, go forward and back. Now go forward again, drop hands, pass through, pass right shoulders to your opposite, you're facing out, that's all there is to a pass through. A uh, little bit of history, uh, up until about 1950, um, 
it, it, there was no standardized version of what was a pass through and what was a right and left through. And, and eventually the callers got together and said, okay, pass through is just the first part without the turn and right and left through is with the turn. So this is just a pass through and it depends on the next call to, to, to know where you're going. So you're going to go around one person and come into the middle. Same active people come into the middle and pass through again. Now split the outside to separate around one person and face across the set. You, uh, keep going until you have a square. Same four people keep going. That's it. Now are you across from your original place? Yes. Good. Pass through in the middle. Separate around one person. Come into the middle. Pass through and stop. Are you facing your corner? Alan, I left your corner. This is where you're set. Try for the side. Side couples. Take your partner by the hand, go forward and back. Up to the middle, and back. Go forward again, pass through. Separate around one person. Keep moving into the middle, pass through. Split the outside two, separate around one. Are you across from home? Same people pass through across the set. Separate around one person. Come into the middle. Pass through. Are you facing your corner? Yeah. Alan and left your corner. Square your set with your partner. Okay, let's do a little of that to use it. Bowing your partner. Corner song. Join hands, circle to the left, go round the hall. I told you wrong. decided that it was just too much of a good thing to go pass through round one, pass through round one, pass through. And, and the caller wanted to, to do more things, especially uh, when um, late 40s, um, people started writing what's now called the Alamand alphabet, which meant variations on the grand right and left. The first one was Lloyd Shaw's Alamand Thar, which uh, went into a star. And then there was Alamand O, which went into a do si do and so forth, uh, and just about every letter uh, had its own version of a, a grand right and left variation until somebody came up with Alaman left and Alaman W. There's no such call, so don't let it trouble you. <laughs> <laughs> but the callers were starting to play around with the chorus uh, or, or break figures, and that's, that's uh, uh, part of how uh, square dancing evolved to what modern square dancing is now, which is totally improvised by the caller. It's called hash, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, just like you would make hash in the kitchen. And, and the first two ways that, um, that calls started getting hashed were, number one, with the uh, visiting couple figures that we did at the first, uh, first dance of this session, where um, each time the, the active couple went on to the next, uh, the caller would call a different figure. Um, and that was, that was hashing a visiting couple dance, called visiting couple hash or, or a do-si-do -si -do, ho-down. Ho-down in some parts of the country meant the same thing as a hash. It would be a, a blend of, of traditional dances. And the other thing that happened was the callers started hashing the breaks, which means c coming up with various variations on the grand right and left. And so um, my theory is that the callers wanted to tighten up on the main figure in order to uh, have more time for the chorus figure or the break. 
Uh, so instead of going all the way around with pass through, round one, pass through, round one, pass through, uh, they started doing this. Uh, hit two couples, go forward and back, go forward again, pass through, separate, round one, come down the middle, pass through, split the ring, go round one, are you across from home? Yeah. Okay, heads do a right and left through. With that includes the courtesy turn, that way around, and there you are at, uh, at home, uh, ready for an Allen man lift. Now, the, the right and left through and the ladies chain were not really common moves in Western square dancing. Uh, they, they, were, they were known, uh, but they were very infrequently done. Uh, there were only one or two dances out of a repertoire of maybe 20 figures that used them, but the callers were perfectly happy to borrow them from the New England style, in order to tighten up on that, uh, that round just one figure. Uh, so let's let's do a little bit, uh, do a little bit to music of of the uh, same thing with the right and left through, and you'll you'll see how it feels different. decided that it was kind of clunky to have to courtesy turn before you got to your corner for an hour man left. And they came up with a new call called Cross Trail. And it's one of my favorite moves and the, uh, the modern square dancers have all but discarded it. It's not part of the, uh, the first year uh, bunch of calls that everybody learns. Uh, and I think that's because it's a little too swoopy and doesn't uh, end up facing a precise direction, which everything has to be precisely defined now. The starting and ending formation, starting and ending facing direction. And uh, cross trail, even though it, it wasn't invented until about 1940, um, it, it has too much of a traditional feel. It depends very much on uh, individual styling and, and the caller being right there to tell you what to do next. It just doesn't seem to fit in with the rest of the modern repertoire. But this is how it goes. Uh, head two couples, go forward and back, go forward again, pass through, separate, go round one, same as before, come down the middle, pass through, split two, separate around one, and you're across from home. Yeah, move into to, to square your set, that's it. Now, you could do a right and left through, but, uh, and then, uh, uh, clunky transition to Alaban left, but instead we're going to smooth it out so the head couples are, don't do it yet, head couples are going to pass through and then your paths are going to cross. The lady is going to cross to her left in front of the gent. Jen is going to cross to his right behind the lady and you're going to end up facing your corner. Now remember, facing your corner is not uh, an integral part of the cross trail. Uh, it's, it's, it, but if you're heading for your corner, that's the logical direction to go. Um, there, is, there was a controversy, or a, actually a, uh, not a controversy so much as a difference of opinion based on regionalism around 1950. Again, as I mentioned, the, uh, uh, they had to sort out whether the, what was a pass through, what was a right and left through, and they decided the pass through was no turn and the right and left through was with the turn. Well, the same thing happened with cross trail. Um, for a while, 
cross trail just meant the, the paths crossing. And if you wanted to uh, have them pass through before they crossed, you said trail on through. And it, it got to the point where nobody could figure out what anybody else meant. <laughs> and I find that if I call cross, if, if, the, if, if, if we have two facing couples like this and I call cross trail, people tend to cross too soon. So I've decided that since, since hardly anybody is using the move nowadays, I reserve the right to, to decide how I'm going to define the terms. And, then, and I'm going to explain, any time I use a cross trail, I'm going to explain what I mean. And that is that I'm going to uh, go back to the, the terminology that says the, cr the cross trail just means the crisscross. So I'm going to say pass through and cross trail. Uh, but I'll say cross trail soon enough that you know as soon as you pass through, you start crisscrossing. So try it. Pass through and cross trail. Lady in front, Jane behind. Alaman left your corner. And square your set. Good. Try it to the side. Side couples go forward and back. Go up to the middle and back. Go forward again. Pass through and separate around one. Come down the middle. Pass through. Split the outside to separate. Are you across from home? Come down the middle, pass through and cross trail, look for the corner. Now the man left your corner. And swear you said. Music professor, and here we go. <laughs> favorite calls and again this was one of the first where it went right into the Alaman left it was almost a surprise Alaman left and that became a fad where uh, callers would not only hash the brakes they would hash the figure and you would do a little of this a little of that and you'd be so mixed up you didn't know whether to spit or wind your watch and all of a sudden bang your call corner comes at you out of the woodwork for an hour. <laughs> That was, that, was, that was a thing for about 30 years uh, or more. So let's go into my favorites. It's, it's from Ed Gilmore of Southern California in 1952. It's called The Ends Turn In or The Big Side Door. Head two couples. Take your partner by the hand, go forward and back. Next call is split your corner through the big side door. Now, because we've been doing all these pass-through dances, I need to warn you. In this dance, the act of couples from home never pass through. You never cross the set. Uh, you're always going to stay on this side of the set. Here's what I mean. You, you go forward and take your opposite out through the nearest side couple. Walk around your corner and hook on the ends, make a line of four with the active people closest to your own home spot. So you, as I said, you never, you never leave this half of your square, the half that you were standing in when we started. Forward eight, and back you do. Go forward again, drop hands, pass through. Right shoulders across, remember pass through is just what it says. You need to know what's coming after that. You join hands again, facing out, arch in the middle, and the ends turn in. Come around, duck through the arch, and make a ring of four in the center. Now, as with most arching figures, if it leaves you facing out, you do an automatic twirl to swap, or California twirl to face back in with the lady on the right. I won't have time to tell you all that. Just remember that it's automatic if you're facing out and there's nobody there, twirl to swap. In the middle, circle to the left one time around, exactly once, and face your own original partner. 
you're facing what I call an east-west direction. I don't, I don't know what the actual direction is, but east-west, east you know, as it, if, if the heads from home are going north-south, you're now facing east-west. Pass through by passing right shoulders by your partner, but split the outside to separate around one, and again, hook on the ends, make a line of four. The active people, in this case it's the heads, are at the end of the line of four. That's it. So it's a repeat, except that the side couples are across from home, it's a repeat of what we just did. Forward, eight, and back, you do. Go forward again, drop hands, pass through, join hands again, facing out. Arch in the middle and the ends turn in. Circle four in the middle again, go all the way around. Look your partner in the eye, pass through, guess who? And the man left your corner. And square your set right there. Okay. And now let's let's um, let's do a, a fun break to to alternate with that with that fun figure. Uh, this this was this is a traditional move that Ricky Holden, who uh, was in San Antonio at the time, uh, he named it Alaman Lift in the Alamo style. Um, and it goes like this, Alaman left your corner, hold on with the left, don't let go, and give a right hand to your partner, both hands up in Alaman position, and do a forward and back balance, let your arms act as springs. Now turn by the right halfway around, catch left of the next, and again, balance forward, and back turn by the left halfway, catch left right hands, balance. Turn by the right halfway, catch left hands, balance, turn by the left, and there's your partner. At this point, the ground rules are the same as when you meet in a grand right left. It could be a dose do it could be a swing, it could be a promenade, or it could be a grand right and left. You've got to keep listening. So for now, promenade your partner home. So that's Alamo and Left, the Alamo style, one of the many variations on grand right and left that were popping up in the 40s and 50s. Do an Alamo and Left in the Alamo style, right to your partner, balance a while. Balance forward, balance back, turn to right, halfway to the outside track. Balance, when you balance down, then you turn to the left, go halfway around. Balance, to when you balance, throw, when you turn to the right, and don't be slow. Balance, turn to the left once more, and swing that one you had before. You promenade to go two, five, two, nine, get away. Sides go forward and back. Go forward again. Split the corner through the big side door. Round just one. Stay close to home. In a line of four. Forward, eight, and back. You do. Forward again. You pass through. Arch in the middle and the ends turn in. Come into the middle in a circle. Four. One full turn in the middle of the floor. Now pass through. Split two when you go around one. Hook on the ends to a line. Forward, eight to the middle and back. You do. Forward again. You pass through. Arch in the middle and the ends turn in. Come into the middle in a circle. Four go once around. Is it in before? Now pass through. Alabama left their corner. Swing your partner. Partner swing. Everybody swing. All join hands forward and back. Look for the corner. Alamo style. Here we go. Alabama left. Give a right to your own. And you balance now. Balance. Turn for the right. Square dancing, and, and which eventually turned into modern square dancing, uh, 
um, he was very fond of those swoopies, those busy, busy couple dances with a lot of circular motion, and, and he thought that that was truer to the great American square dance than the New England quadrille, which was all uh, uh, precise and north, south, east, west. Uh, but the irony is that the uh, in modern square dancing, the club movement, the swoopy figures have died out completely, and just about all the choreography now is, is on the grid pattern, and it feels more like the quadrilles that, than, than it does like the traditional Western dance. So there's, there's really nothing Western about the modern so-called Western square dance, except, except for some of the costumes, and even those are going by the wayside as more and more groups get rid of their dress codes. Um, okay, that's enough yak. So here we go. Head couples. Go forward and back. Go forward again. Pass through and separate around one. Split the couple into the center. Pass through and stop facing that outside couple. Join hands in a ring. Circle to the left halfway around. So the active couple is on the outside looking in. And the next call is going to be dive through, which just means the inside arch, the outside under, and outside couples dive in. The arching couples take a step forward and do an automatic California twirl or twirl swap. And in the middle, don't do a thing. That's all there is to a dive through. It's just one pass with the out inside couple going over and outside couple going under, and then it depends. Just like a pass through, it depends on the next call. So you for you to know where you're going. It's just a four beat move. Uh, you just go under the arch or over, and if you're on the outside, you twirl. If you're on the inside, you don't. Very important that you're facing whoever you're facing. So in the middle, pass through. Remember, that's just another four beat move. And now, with a couple of you face, do a right and left through, which includes the turn halfway around. Okay, now, inside arch, dive through. In the middle, pass through on the outside as well. And again, right and left through with the outside too. Dive through, stop. In the middle, do a right and left through, which includes the turn. Face that same two. You always end a right and left through facing the people you did it with. Circle left halfway around. Pass through in the middle. Is that your corner? Say yes. yes. Alabama left your corner. I swear you're set. I stole that from Ted Sinella, who knows where he got it from. I must have made it up, but he would always, if, if, if people looked unsure, he'd say, say yes. And the, the majority of the people who were there would say yes, and that would be good enough. Okay, is everybody home with your partner? Okay, uh, quick walk through for the side. Side couples go forward and back. Forward again, pass through, separate around one person. Come into the middle, pass through, circle half with the outside too. Active couples are on the outside. Dive through, pass through, right on that through with the outside too. Thanks to people you did it with. Dive through, pass through, right on that through with the outside too. Dive through, right and left through, in the middle, that puts the turn, thanks to people you did it with. You're only working in the center there. Good. Pass through. I, I'm sorry, don't pass through. Circle left, halfway around it. I lost my place. Now pass through. Alabama left your corner, should be the same one. Okay. Come on back home. Swinger said. That's a little chicken plucker, and then we'll take a break.